so I put number 4 verses 17 to 31 but just before I start you know another strange thing happened to me today it wasn't so strange but last Tuesday I told y'all about those eight doves that came you know and I ain't seen them since so this morning I looked out the window <laughs> and I counted again two was in the back four was in the back and four I said where did they come from it was just last Tuesday they was here and I hadn't seen them all week long it was this Tuesday thing here amen all right um, last week we attempted to go a little bit with team development and um, it was fairness getting it all together and tonight is actually session number 25 and I would like piggyback off a little bit of that I didn't finish everything last week so we're going to look at um, chapter number 4 verses 17 to through through 31 of Ephesians Ephesians 4 chapters Ephesians the fourth chapter 17th verse King James Version this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness Ephesians 4:19 to work all uncleanness with greediness but ye have not so learned Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him mm -hmm. as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man mm -hmm. which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor mm -hmm. for we are members one of another be ye angry verse 26 and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil mm -hmm. let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth let no corrupt communication mm -hmm. proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you mm -hmm. with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Amen. Now that's a lot to digest. But I think if we would take a bowl every day, take a sandwich to work with us, this word, in our break hours and moments, and you know, even to our churches or whatever in our communities, just have it attached in, uh, to maybe in our clothing or somewhere, and every now and then look at it and say, this is you now how I'm supposed to live. And uh, if, if more believers, and incidentally, when you're talking to the church, I mean, you wouldn't think the church would have all these problems. So if the church then had those kind of problems, therefore it tells us that people today will have also the same similar problems because of the flesh. And, and I, don't, I don't think that perhaps, well, maybe we do, 
but uh, maybe it's not taken serious enough how damaging the flesh can be to our spiritual walk with God if we allow it to control us and too many times we allow it to control us without even recognizing the uh, parallel here what God wants and what the enemy wants and say you know what if the enemy wants this then I got to be careful because I don't want to give place to the devil I don't want to allow him to come in and uh, disturb my peace of mind or or whatever the victory I do have and do have and so you got to be very conscious of the fact that leaders non-leaders because you're human beings as I always said in the prior uh, uh, sessions that it's not only applicable to the leadership or leaders it's just applicable to the body of believers and everybody really dealing with the same issues most of the time it's just masked and it's, it's much covered it's, it's mostly covered up and some people just let you see the whole book and others just let you see the cover you know and don't let you see the inside pages of our personal lives and so we got to be very conscious of the fact that this is the walk that God wants us to have and these are the uh, basics and the principles whereby he has inspired his uh, uh, his apostles and disciples uh, to um, write and record and promote this kind of gospel and this kind of gospel uh, or principle or doctrine if you if it were is not popular is because it's not the kind that people will jump and shout about it screens us and it examines us and it challenges us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet and it um, hit us in places where we don't like to be hit and sometimes we like to ignore it um, but the truth of the matter is God's going to uh, judge us all he has already um, viewed our conduct and, and our commitment to him he knows if it's a genuine commitment you want to always make sure that you know that you have a genuine com- commitment and it's not a, a, a facade or just not uh, a, a, a floater that's going by it's not really true commitment judge your own self say you know what am I compatible to what God's word is telling me I should be compatible to and do I have these other issues and if you have issues you have we all have some type something going on somewhere something don't have to be sin and don't have to be evil and you know this could be just you know just human nature and so we have to work on that and I believe he left us with some work to be done with each and every individual and if we focus mostly on ourselves and everybody focus on themselves and look at our own uh, deficiencies, then we'll get better. And, and, the, and the, as a result, everybody else will get better because somebody will see you getting better. And, and they say, you know what, I want to amplify. I want to um, um, I want to be uh, like that person. And I want to um, be a product of, of who God wants me to be. And I want to be an example of the believers. So the believers are always challenged. And as I say it so often, this whole epistle writing, Apostle Paul wrote to the church, always to the churches, uh, wasn't really to the heathen, it was to the churches and the people that was in authority and out of authority, uh, young, old, and in between. Uh, it never gets old. This word never gets old. When you think your testimony is old, this, this word is, <laughs> you know, that's what our uh, testimony is just uh, in infancy, in infancy. And uh, the word of God is is way with thousands of years and you know, hundreds of years in, in the process, but um, it's still applicable today. And some of the s- scenarios were directed to the, the customs and and uh, what was the order of the day, or even the the, the the culture of that day, that give you a broader enlightenment of what. And why apostles said certain things in reference to even to the women, um, because of the culture factor and the, what the culture believed. And if you want to have a fight on your hand, you try to change the culture. And so he tried to change the culture, and uh, but he had to ease his way in there. He had to use certain things that was um, applicable, and certain things that was comfortable in some areas. But then he just couldn't cover it like that. He just had to hit him point blank. And every time he hit them point blank, it just, you know, just knocked them off of their ho- high horses. And so he um, was willing to accept the consequences of telling the truth. And I want to ask you, are you willing to accept the consequences of telling the truth? The truth will always make you free. Uh, praise God. I mean, somebody else may not see it as freedom, but it's free because 
uh, it produces freedom. It allows your spirit to be free. It, it allows your heart to uh, rejoice inwardly. And you can be in prison, but yet you can be yet free spiritually. So, and, uh, you know, you may be agonizing in the flesh, but your spirit, man, you know that you are now pleasing God and you're on the right track, the right road. Well, in the church, it's the same thing. Uh, you have people coming that are hurting, constantly hurting. And these epistles uh, will help us. The church of Ephesus was always dealing with something. And you see them in Revelation chapter number uh, two. Uh, you see uh, Ephesus and you see the other uh, six churches, total of seven churches that he was addressed in Revelation. But I want to look even further uh, about honesty. And I want to read just a little excerpt here out of a book here by uh, Lauren Wolfe. And I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. But um, it is from my leadership secrets from the Bible. And p page number, you don't have a copy, but I'm just going to read a, s a small insert, ex excerpt. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Just at the bottom here, it's um, in reference to justice and fairness. And you would think that believers would always want to do things right and be fair in what they do do, right? I mean, you would assume non-leaders or leaders you would just want to assume so assume so it says if people perceive that they are being treated unfairly they will stop performing or they will act like those who are perceived at as favored so somebody you know seem to be getting favored because of the action and if it's a positive or negative action people will emulate and and be just like that person or people to try to you know receive the same attention or accolades, sometimes it's the wrong uh, portrayal of, of of how we should act, and you and we had this tendency to look at the, the the older ones, which is normal, because the intent of God certainly I believe was uh, that the elders, when I say the elders, the senior people were the ones that to be stabilized, that had uh, went through the uh, let's say adolescent years in their juvenile uh, actions and ways and their uh, off-the-cuff attitudes and comments, etc. And they suffered the consequences of what they said and did. But over time, um, they grew out of that. And see, when you grow out of something, you become, you know, a different size. You become a different uh, person. You look back and you say, I don't see how in the world I acted like that. And I have some look back and I say, you know, how did, why did I act like that? Why did I say that? I was, you know, I was just so immature. It's, I said, that was corny. It was, it really was corny of me. You know, it's corny. This doesn't make sense. But I thought it was hilarious and I thought it was funful. Uh, I, I don't know if that's a word, funful, but I thought it was fun because, uh, you know, to me it was in the state of mind I was in. Well, the state of mind that you're in really uh, is predicated upon uh, where you are in your maturity or lack of maturity or having it. And so if you haven't come to the place of understanding, it's hard to try to drill something into someone's mind to let them catch it uh, when they're not really conscious of the fact that I, I don't need this, you know, and the learning curve has to be applied. And once you learn something, you learn a hard knocks of learning. Once you learn something, you get hit hard enough with something. You kind of like, well, you know, you say, you know what, I don't need to get hit over the head again like this. You know, I don't need to go through this again like this, you know. So if you come out of something that was really uh, traumatic and something that's really had really uh, caused you a lot of aches and pains and suffering and you've got a little freedom now and, you know, you say, God, I'm on the good side. And it's still good to like to wake up in the morning and, and go about your daily walk and, you know what, I ain't, I ain't cussed nobody out and <laughs> lied and cheated and did not. <laughs> Y'all feel me? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's a cleansing feeling. It's a cleansing feeling. It's not a, a feeling of condemnation whereby I'm condemned because, oh, no, who would have not even done what I did, you know? So you had to go through the, um, the uh, different almost motions of, 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 let's say, repentance, and, and, and you still don't feel like you need to feel, and but um, want to feel, I'll say. A lot of times it takes a while to feel that real total freedom. Sometimes you're already free, but God let it linger. Just let the feeling linger because he wants us to, you know, feel the pain um, of our consequences of our actions. So as a believer and as a person that want to um, 
want to walk in uh, fairness, we got to be fair, first of all, with ourselves. And, and it goes on and says, the most credible companies are committed to justice, not just uh, in the workplace, but in the communities where they are located. And the most credible leaders believe in fairness to all individuals and groups and acts and groups and act in a uh, consonant consonant or that's in the uh, being in concert being together um, being on one with one accord with these beliefs even when this is unfavorable or difficult so in our personality this is bending and even binding with God's personality it's, it's a struggle sometimes is because we've been locked in our position of selfishness and I'll get to that word in a minute so long that it's hard for us to kind of like bend out of that posture and you don't want to ever be locked into ignorance because ignorance can cause you to miss a whole lot of what God wants us to have and it can cause a whole lot of pain as a result and it goes on and says this uh, a concern for the economically or socially disadvantaged can help not just a leader leaders credibility but also companies um, profitability a leader who operates on principles of fairness inspires better employee performances or performance loyalty and retention so there's always uh, good nuggets that would help us in life as uh, people of God and don't be stressed over people when they act out don't let people move you out of your place because you're giving place to the devil when you do that or the adversary uh, person is going to act because of where they are in life and when and, and many times we, you're dealing with that N leaders and non-leaders we're just dealing with folk that are just acting up and uh, we are attracted to that and we feed into it and while we're feeding into it we're eating from that mindset we're eating from that setting and as a result we are ingesting things that we shouldn't ingest because we have taken part of the dinner uh, of the conduct or the character and of that particular situation but God don't want us to do, do that uh, to be honest and to be fair with yourself and everybody else uh, even if you have sympathy or empathy empathize with a person or a situation you can do that because that's human that's expected we have those human emotions but don't agree with something when you know it's entirely wrong when you know it's against the word of God it's not an option or opinion it's not my decision or, or your decision it's just like it's what God says so whatever God says we just find ourselves doing it so you're going to be called corny you're going to be called whatever you know holy roller call it call you you know call you what you want to call me but uh, you have a higher um, power to um, to um, answer to and that is good to God of creation God Almighty and so we if we keep that mindset that it's God first God ha is the one that uh, I'm serving and and, and 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 I was washing the blood of Jesus on Calvary and every time I stumble or fall whatever I can go back to that throne and you might like you might not accept um, me coming back uh, these many times but if I'm sincere and real Christ will and and that's the whole uh, attitude of grace uh, what's the number of grace how many times you know what, what is the number the cutoff number I don't know if uh, God may extend one ab above another and have you ever seen some folks that just keep messing up they messing up and look like they keep getting blessed and and you wonder why they're not cut off by now but the Bible says vengeance is mine says the Lord I will repay and learn that I had to learn that and I want to do even or stuff like that but I had to learn that I had to step back and I allow God to do what he wanted to do because he can fix anything and everybody and when you try to do it, when I try to do it, we get our hands in it and we get it, make, we make it worse. You know, uh, we make it worse. It's like when God is trying to purge somebody or in the meta, uh, metallurgy, uh, medical, well, not medical, but metals. And uh, when they're burning uh, uh, to make purity out of silver or gold, whatever, they have the draw f that flows to the top. These are is the impurities that's it's being worked out of the the the, uh, the the metal, the gold or the silver, 
And so they scra- normally scrape that off is because they, they're trying to make a pure product, a pure product. And so w- when somebody's being refined and being burnt and being uh, uh, tried by fire as it is, God is trying to burn some stuff up out of us so we can like, discard it and let it be scraped away from our life. But a lot of times we just pull that stuff right back in, you see. So we're pulling back in contamination or we are uh, polluting what God wants to cleanse. And so in our attitudes and our hearts and everything else, we got to like all the time be in that melting pot and let God perform the work that he needs to do. Now we have um, three, I call them the three, I almost said the three stooges, but I call It's the three S's, <laughs> and it's strife, sedition, and selfish. The three S's, strife, sedition, and 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 uh, selfish. Well, there's a couple of places I'm going back to Ephesians, and I want my wife to read verse 18 from the Amplified, and verse. 22 from the Amplified. Ephesians 4, 18, mm-hmm. Amplified Version. Their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is beclouded. They are alienated, estranged, self-banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the ignorance, the want of knowledge and perception, the willful blindness blindness. that is deep-seated in them due to their hardness of heart to the insensitiveness of their moral nature. Verse 20 Uh, 19. uh, Yes, I hold right there that little bit now their th- moral understanding mm-hmm. is darkened is it just now read it from the king james again verse 17 no, 18, i'm sorry 18, 18. 18. Mm-hmm. having the understanding darkened mm-hmm. being alienated, being alienated separated from, from the from life of god mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Ignorance that's in us, when I say us, yeah. it's human nature, yeah. in our nature, yeah. and the blindness of our hearts. Our hearts are blinded, and all these things, uh, as the Amplified says, it says it's, you d- it's deep seated. Yep, yeah, their moral and understanding is darkened. Morality and their reasoning is, just is darkened. Clouded. Darkened. Our moral decision and decision makings are darkened because we're living in a dark world, and the world system is a dark world. And uh, so once our, our minds get darkened they and are our morals alienated. get darkened, we f- are separated, as she said, alienated from the godly things. And, and we strange. don't see clearly yep. uh, because our hearts are really uh, deep-seated with this. Now, uh, the heart, when once the heart becomes blind, and, and it's a metaphor for the inward man, that the, you know, the, the, the basics of, of the inside and the truth, uh, when the heart gets dark and when the heart gets alienated from God, yet we can come to church and we can go through the, the things. The church, p- the church actually, we s- uh, speak those, we do the church um, uh, things. And, 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 and if our heart is seated and with a corrupt base and we are blinded, and see, if a person is blinded, that means they don't see. They don't see. They don't see. And when you try to talk to a blind person, you say, you see that, 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 you see that flag back there, you just see that. You know, but if you're naturally blind, you don't see nothing back there, you see. But now if you're the one that see, have the sight, then you're seeing it plain and clear. But trying to relate or translate what you do see to the other person, they just can't see it. They can't see it, you know. Well, you really need to be saved. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't, I don't do nothing wrong, you know, I just, you know, I go to church every week, you know, I give money, I pay tithe, I give offering, I, I, you know, I shout or whatever, you know, but if my heart is darkened, if my attitude, see, 
uh, how I treat you is, is part of my Christian walk. If I don't treat you like I'm supposed to, if I'm unfair to you, if I'm, if I'm showing you a dark side and it's our personality sometimes sneaks up in there is because we give place to the devil. We give place to him and he's standing there as, again, Genesis 4 and 7 says, uh, send life at the door. So it's just that close. And at the door means you're just at the door. door that's right there, the doorway to our whatever sin is right there waiting to just get in there, waiting for a heart to become blinded to be infiltrated with misjudgment and so uh, uh, and to be seated, deep seated uh, with uh, selfishness and I'll get to that one too but in the natural in the natural and there may be others but in the natural I say well, what is, what, is um, what caused natural blindness or how many th things that can cause natural blindness and so I look right quickly and I've seen at least 23 things that came up at least 23 things and it might be even more but at least 23 things that can cause natural blindness you know it could be because of a sickness that one thing leads to another or something it could be medication it could be well, it could be an accident to that to that it goes the list goes on and on and on so in the natural you gotta always uh, understand as I'm sure you do that the spiritual has relevance too because you can look at the natural and you can see the spiritual uh, interactions as well or applications what causes people to be spiritually blind you know maybe their background you know maybe they they don't really know god but they go to church you know they never had a personal re a relationship with him uh, uh, maybe it was something that uh, was said to them but they can't get over it you know, it could, it, it's a multiplicity or it's a m major stuff in some cases, but it's a, a whole lot of stuff that's mangled and intertwined uh, in our heart sometimes that causes a spiritual blindness and a stagnation uh, of, of, of progress. We can't progress because we are blinded. You know, you can't go forward because you can't see how to go forward because when you're blind in the natural, again, you know, you can't see how to walk. You know, you start to walk into walls and stumble and fall over things. Same thing in the spirit. When you're spiritually blind, you know, and, and normally a person that's spiritually blind won't even acknowledge it. For the most part, they'll say, you know, ain't nothing wrong with me. I, I, you know, I'm still saved. I'm still whatever. You know, maybe being saved wasn't the question. But the question was, are you growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Is there a pattern of growth? Or, or regression? Am I regressing? Am I going backwards instead of going forward? You know, am I uh, beyond where I used to be? I'm further up the road. But again, am I backtracking or in, am I in the same spot? And I never grew. You know, so I'm deep seated in my pride. I'm, I'm you know, I'm uh, because I feel like it. And your feelings can really be d betrayal. Uh, can betray us. Uh, you can feel like you've got victory. And you can be just as bound as I don't know what, you know. And then on, on the other flip side of that, you can feel like you're bound, but yet you're so victorious. And that's why you got to walk by faith because you can't trust your feelings because your feelings sometimes is purpose uh, to put you into bondage because your adversary will use every tool that he can use against us. And verse 24 says, again, don't give place to the devil. He, he's, he's, he don't give place to the devil, you know. You, you, you deliver, you're free, God's bless you, I don't care what, who's saying what about you, how they want to treat you, and, and you know, as long as you know for yourself that you, you have a true relationship with him, and you're going forward, I am not the same person I was. Just go through the checkoff list. Well, I used to drink twice a week and three times a month. I don't drink no more. You know, well, I used to run the streets, but I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So you can, check, you can have a checklist, checklist. You know, I used to have an attitude every time somebody said something to me. I would jump back in the game and want to spiritually fight with them and chide with them. So you have to, like, check the list off, you know. Can I take a hard word? And, and I hear it sometimes. Sometimes uh, you've heard it many times. See, I like it when preachers preach hard. When I say hard, I mean when they not, you know, not it's not the physical, but when the word is just the word, just without, un it well, uncut. It's uncut. It's not sugarcoated. It's just uncut, but it's true. It's word, and because it's not an easy word, and we kind of like put up defense mechanism mechanisms, 
we kind of like withdraw ourselves and say, you know, that was too hard. And I heard people, I heard believers say that many times throughout my lifetime. You know, it's like, that was too hard, man. That, he's too tough. That person's too tough. Well, if you can't take that, you can't take that. You ain't going to be able to take, you know, you know. I was, I was looking, and I, I, and I make maybe more comments on this. Uh, I mentioned something Sunday about the, the tribulation period. And I was looking through the, the 21 bold judgments, I mean 21 judgments. That's going to the church, the people that's going to be left behind. And that's a, that's a, that's, that is horrific. I mean, there's 21 uh, judgments that's going to be uh, given in place on this, on this planet. When Jesus uh, snatches the saints out and the tri great tribulation period starts, the seven years of tribulation, well, it's going to be followed by some, some horrendous things, you know. And uh, to read those horrendous things that's going to happen on this earth, I mean, like ooh, millions of people are going to be killed and millions and millions. You know, I mean, there's about seven and a half billion or something like that uh, people in the world. But uh, when he's talking about a couple billion killed, that, that's, you know, that's like, it's not a fairy tale. But we think it's a fairy tale because we can't identify with it that this is going to happen. And, and, uh, and I'm just being general in the great tribulation period but yet to warn the people that get saved if you're not saved you know and they just hear it become dull of hearing and it's very important that we are saved it's very important that the young folk in here the children that you're saved and the adults that you we're saved and stay saved and just do the right thing so um strife 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 uh to say this quickly uh Air abraham and that's in Gen genesis what i was going to Look at Genesis right quick. Genesis chapter 13, verse 7 and 8. Genesis, the 13th chapter, verse 17, verse 7 and 8. And, eight. Uh -huh. and there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's mm -hmm. cattle mm -hmm. and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. Mm -hmm. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And Abram said unto Lot, mm -hmm. Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, uh -huh. for we be brethren. Now see that? Now this is the attitude that Abraham had uh, with, with Lot, and because they were relatives, really, but they were brethren. That uh, and attitude God still has for the same us today as believers. Yes. Sisters and brothers, we're not supposed to be fighting one another like cats and dogs, you know. Uh, we, we do that. So when we do that, we violate God's principle. Yes, yes. We violate the intent. Our hearts are darkened. Our hearts have been covered uh, and, 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 and shrouded with uh, deceit when we fight one another. Find a way to resolve issues. Find a way to resolve problems. Find a way to get around that corner. Uh, and the strife is something what is a very angry or violent disagreement between two or more people or groups. It's, it's a fight. It's a struggle. It's a conflict. So find a way to resolve these issues that we have and we have it so often. But again, it's a tool of the adversary. It's not in one place. It's not just here. It's all over the place. It's in everybody's church, whatever like that. It just you got to find a way to deal with issues. And this is the, the uh, mindset God has given the church, how to work things out. And we don't like to work, work things out because we like to hold on to our selfishness. And, uh, and, and, and so sometimes we just blow it. We blow it. We blow it. Our laborers, workers, leaders, uh, just workers are hard to, to, to find, to come across. And when you have good workers, people don't want to let good workers go. And, and that's normal, but um, everybody, because you see members, and I was talking to a friend of mine today, and he's at a church, preached to the church, about 1,200 membership, and uh, they put him over the, the, uh, the men's meeting, or the men's services, over the men, and he said there's like about 500 men in the church, and now the person only been there several years to the church, and I say, well, what happened to the person that was in that position? He's, he, he said, well, <laughs> the person that was in that position wasn't really qualified for it. And uh, the uh, men's uh, ministry was dormant in that church for over two years, two years roughly. And there's nobody else that could, you know, 
So you would think like you got about 500 men, 500 people, that somebody in the 500 ought to be qualified or able to step up. But I just said that to say that you might see numbers, numbers, but, but if, if there, there's quality, you see? Everybody don't have that same, like you just said, the commitment, the committed mind. Everybody's not c conscious of the fact that um, I want to get this done thing done. I want to get it done right, you know? And so we, 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 got, we got to, like, focus on just being who God wants us to be because we could be a help to others. And, again, don't look like, well, they got all the money. Uh, they got so-and-so, got so -and -so, got so-and-so. So, hey, you know, maybe God wants to use you. Maybe their heart is not where it sh should be. And, but he don't want you to bash them. He wants you to s take a spot because we don't want to give place to the devil. And so sedition uh, is sedition, no, I'm going to jump, I'm going to say selfish. A lot of times we're selfish. Selfish, to be selfish is having or showing concern only for yourself and not for the needs, not for the needs of others, but only for yourself. That's being selfish. So many times we're just playing outright selfish, you know. If I don't have my way, then I ain't going to help nobody, you know. I ain't going to work, help your program go over. I ain't going to be part of the team. I'm going to be a divisive person. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to roll my eyes and smack my lips, you know. <laughs> and there's a certain look that gets on people when they're, at, when they're out of the will, when they're on the, the wrong side of the fence. Let's all stand. <laughs>